subscribe and ring the bell to never miss an update. The teapot is a useful vessel that is a symbol of friendship. Today on Lady Mary Bath, I will showcase my teapot collection along with uses and ways to acquire them. Join me! You may wonder why we have a separate coffee and teapot. After all, there are warm liquids that are poured from a spout. But shape is everything. A coffee pot is tall and slender to allow the grounds to sink to the bottom. And a teapot lives up to the childhood song, it's short and stout. Shape is everything. The maximum water surface area allows the tea leaves to expand in their own unique way while brewing for maximum flavor. Let's take a look at some of the teapots and the different shapes and sizes. Tea for one is perfect and pretty, especially for a spot of tea in the morning or the afternoon. I'll show you some of the older manufacturers and how they created miniature teapots. This is a Villorian Bach in the Bergen Lane blue pattern that originated in 1926. It is from that particular debut year because the back stamp tells me that it ranged from 1884 to 1926. So this is a very special piece. I picked it up at the flea market in Germany for just a few euros. And this Royal Terra from Galway, Ireland is so pretty and would go with most any color if you have a, maybe a colorful teacup or different style with the shamrocks and the gold band. It's very pretty. And this silver-plated vintage teapot I picked up in Franklin, Tennessee for $8. As you can tell, it's missing a lid. But don't ever discount a teapot that's missing an important part because you can turn that into something unique. I have featured this at the Houston Junior League for a tea-themed luncheon with fresh florals. It was beautiful. You could also put makeup brushes or cotton balls, Q-tips, and keep it on your vanity. So that is just an idea for another use for a teapot. You may have heard of the Brown Betty and maybe you didn't know quite what that was. That is a teapot that originated in 1695 in England. And the red clay is very durable and retains heat well. And that was found in the Stoke-on-Trent area in England. It has a manganese glaze that is known as the Rockingham glaze. And here we have one of the original miniatures that has a blue band. And this is a more modern version that is with a teacup underneath. And the way to tell if it's a true brown Betty is to look underneath and the edge should be red clay. If it's white ceramic, it's not a true brown Betty. This I found at Goodwill for $2.99. You can tell I haven't used it yet. It still has the sticker. And this is another newer one. It's from Villorian Bach in the French garden pattern. And the neat thing about tea for one is that while the tea is brewing, it warms your teacup. It's absolutely perfect for an afternoon treat. This is one from PPD Design, paper product design. And I found this at the Houston Symphony in the gift shop. I've actually given this to a friend. It was so beautifully packaged in its own little hat box. And these you can find online or in one of my favorite gift shops, and I'll include the link in the description. This is the Peacock Royale. Isn't that lovely? So again, you brew your tea, your cup is pre-warmed, and there's even room on the plate for a tea biscuit. And these are great examples of tea for one. These lovely teapots all have a royal connection. The iconic Wedgwood Jasperware is lovely, and in 1770, Josiah Wedgwood created this using a bisque or matte method with a neoclassical design, and it was very pleasing to Queen Charlotte. And today, Wedgwood has a royal warrant from Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth. And also continuing the royal theme, these lovely teapots from the Sadler Company are my new favorites. I recently acquired this on eBay for a steal 
My friend has this featured with her teacups and I've always admired it. I assumed it would be hundreds of dollars, but I paid $22 on eBay. Of course, there were some that were priced higher and it has a commemorative date on it for Queen Elizabeth's Golden Jubilee. That's 50 years on the throne. You'll see the years 1952 to 2002. It has lots of detailing and a very unique oblong teapot lid. It is lovely. And the Sadler Company also made a teapot to commemorate Queen Elizabeth's 80th birthday. And the dates are 1926 to 2006, also with the same lid and lovely detailing. And this silver-plated heirloom melon teapot is quite unusual. You'll see that it's almost like Cinderella's carriage, but it is in the shape of a melon with a melon finial accent. And this I saw recently on the Netflix series, The Crown season two. It is featured as Queen Elizabeth's Windsor Castle tea set. And if you watch episode eight, you will see her serving Jackie Kennedy tea in this lovely piece. I found the whole set at a charity resale for $80. And I'm really glad to have this. I feature all of these in my coffee tea bar. Most China manufacturers offer the teapot in their standard assortment, and it is usually a two cup size, and it goes on to a four cup or a six cup. And most of these are from my dish patterns. These three, you may realize, are identical in design with simply a different pattern on the teapot. They're from the Manoir collection from Villorian Bach. This is the French Garden. That's a very popular pattern in the United States and the Petite Fleur, which is lovely, has so many colors, you can set the table many different ways. And this is the Casa Azul pattern. It didn't have a very long life. It retired quite early. I saw a table set with this in the 90s at the factory in Medlach, Germany, and I knew I had to have it. And I'm so glad to be able to feature the Casa Azul. It's so very pretty. Wedgwood has different shape teapots. This is the crown gold and the wild strawberry. These are both from my original bridal registry. And as you can see, they blend very well together. So I often feature them on the same table. And wild strawberry is such a popular pattern that they even made a mini tea set just for a collection. And I feature this in my coffee tea bar just to have a little something fun on the shelf. And you've heard me talk about my Burgenland Blue from Villorin Bach. This was the teapot that I got as a bride and it is from the 90s. It's so nice. And then this is the larger version that's probably a bit older. And I have one even bigger than that at my home in Germany. And also in the transferware pattern, this is Old Britain Castles from Johnson Brothers Wedgwood. And it has a very nice rectangular shape and lid. And one thing to look for when you're shopping for a teapot, whether it's online or a secondary market or department store, is make sure that the spout is intact. This is the most vulnerable part of a teapot. And then also on the lid, you'll see that it has either a shape or a stopper. And make sure that's not chipped because often it does get damaged. And here is an example of a stopper. And if it's opened incorrectly, it can get chipped. This one happens to have two stoppers, which is a bit unusual. So be sure to look at all those details. And another thing to watch out for is a hairline crack. In my Burgenland Blue, the large teapot, you'll see the hairline crack. Now, this is not the part where the hot liquid touches. It's not poured from this area. So it's really okay and it's not visible. But if it were on the main part of the teapot, you might want to be careful with it. This is a beautiful teapot from Windsor, England. A friend has loaned me to show you today. And it does have a hairline crack that's hardly noticeable, but you just wanna be very careful with your hot liquids. This is another lovely teapot that could be American. It doesn't have a mark on the bottom. This was loaned to me by a friend. And with all the pretty colors, you can imagine so many table settings. So beautiful. And silver plated teapot is always nice to have on hand. This I found at an antique shop in Franklin, Tennessee. It was $30. 
The lid needs a bit of an adjustment, but I'm not too worried because I mostly use it for floral arrangements. I have used this as a centerpiece at the Junior League for a tea-themed luncheon and for many other events. It's always nice to have a classic teapot on hand, and even if you just have one good teapot that can blend with your patterns, that's always nice to have. And even if you have a neutral colored pattern dish, such as white dishes, you could take two or three teapots and add interest to your table, and that way you know which tea is in which pot when you're serving your guests. A seasonal teapot is a great option for adding a festive look to your holiday. With just white dishes, you can change the whole feel of the table. I have two Christmas teapots I wanted to show you. This is the Toys Fantasy from Villorian Bach. It's got lots of detailing and the German Christmas star is dotted throughout with a very unique finial. I usually pick this up at the factory store in Germany. This I actually bought on eBay and we use it during the holidays. And I also fill it with hot chocolate. We don't always have tea lovers at the table, especially if children are there. And there's so many great options for that. And for the silver teapot without the lid, I like to put peppermint sticks in that to stir the hot chocolate. So that's an idea. The Linux holiday teapot looks like a six cup. It is quite large and great for serving. And this was from shotgoodwill.com, brand new in a box. I got it for about $30. So really happy to have the Linux holiday teapot, especially with it being oversized. And this beautiful tea for one, to me looks very fall and winter. It could carry you through from October through January. And it's a really nice pattern. And believe it or not, it's from Cracker Barrel. I was very surprised. I need to start shopping there. So many pretty things. So that is an idea. It doesn't always have to be a big teapot, but it could just be for you for your morning tea. And this Valentine teapot is really interesting. It's a pink luster with silver accents and it has a heart shape on the teapot and on the lid. Isn't that fun? I've used this a lot on my Valentine table and it adds interest and such fun. So think about adding a seasonal teapot to save space so that you don't have to have a Christmas pattern. You can just add a couple of elements. Classic, whimsical, and seasonal teapots bring such joy. This is my new favorite, the oval teapot commemorating Queen Elizabeth. So glad to have found this. And remember that even a well-loved teapot can have a second life, whether it's planting succulents or placing wrapped candies inside or for dessert spoons. Thanks again for joining Lady Mary Bath. Elevate your everyday with beautiful teapots. Thanks for joining Lady Mary Bath. Please hit like and subscribe. I hope to see you next time for more lifestyle tips.